beautiful, exotic women, weird floating disc things, and fiery explosions where brain meat usually goes. All this and more coming up in the exciting premiere of Steve Argyle's Mastering the Digital Mastery of the Digital Masters. Welcome back, my beloved minions. I hope you're ready to paint and brought your grubby clothes, because I am about to blast them off your salty bodies with 30 minutes of relentless digital awesome. Do your best to contain your glee as I create a blank canvas and fill it with a light gray. And as you gasp at my overlaying a paper texture, try not to inhale any solid objects. I leave this overlay layer on top of everything. It's a cheap but delightful shortcut to give the whole image a little texture. It helps de-digital the overall look. So I'm just gonna start scribbling, and we will see what emerges to say hello. I think maybe a woman in profile with some sort of weird, crazy headdress thing. That's popular with you kids these days, right? As this lesson progresses, you will witness my tremendous psychic abilities to invoke hotkeys with my mind. For mortals, I recommend a programmable game controller. Fear not, for I will cover epic level digital artist tool setup in a future lesson. So, I'm gonna want something going on back here. Maybe it's a part of the background, like a mountain, or a mesh of cobwebs, or maybe it's like cable trapping her, or maybe it's just more costume. Right now, I'm just gonna fiddle with shapes and not worry about what those shapes are until later. Maybe we should put some little things dangling off the headdress. This is all basically a really loose brainstorm kind of thing. I go ahead and work super sloppy because then I don't worry about changing anything. At this point it's all about mood and shapes and just ideas. And facial decorations are always cool, so maybe like tattoos or jewelry that sits on the skin. And here, let's put some little accessories to be a transition between the pale skin and the dark headdress. And I'm thinking maybe the headdress is composed of overlapping plates or something. And let's say that this is like a floating disc with ribbons coming off it back here. Sort of suggestive of wings. I think I like the idea of ribbons, so I'm going to put some on her headdress too. Now, I'm going to want her profile to stand out, so... Let's darken the background around her face to summon a little contrast, shall we? I want to bring a little bit of that lighter value into the headdress. And as I'm playing with it, I think I want it to be fire. You guys want to learn how to paint fire, right? I have some delicious digital sorcery for painting fire quickly and easily. Seriously, and maybe I shouldn't be telling you guys this, my workaround for fire makes it so easy that when I'm feeling lazy, I just make a painting with a lot of fire in it. But, note to any of my corporate overlords who may be listening, uh, never on any of your paintings. Promise. Now, I'm not sure yet, but I think maybe we'll have more fire, or at least the same colors, for her eye. And since she's quickly becoming wholly supernatural, Maybe this part of her face will be metal or something. Uh, I'm not thinking chrome, because I think that wouldn't mesh well with the vibe we're starting to get, but some sort of smooth, contrasty surface. Now maybe some fiery, floating lights out in front of her. Uh, uh, maybe a halo, make that angel theme more obvious. No, not a fan of that either. Uh, something more subtle, maybe. Screw it, maybe something later. Okay, admittedly, she's kind of boring compositionally, but I don't want to go uber overboard on what is supposed to be a short lesson. 
Perhaps we can make it slightly less blasé if we fiddle around with the placement in the frame. There's a bit of a spiral theme already happening, so I think I'll go with that and try and coax it out a little more. And cut in some perpendiculars in the corners here for balance. These could be foreground elements or background stuff. At this stage it doesn't really matter. Uh, I don't even know if these would be better as darks or lights, but indecision is the power and the majesty of the digital medium. The thing is, this is making her feel crowded, like she's in a tiny cave or something. But she feels regal, like she should reign over a mighty dominion, like she should be more likely looking down from a tower. We could try a horizon line on the same level as her eyes, or maybe have her examining an artifact or something. Nope, that's not working either. Uh, that really crowds the lower left corner. It could work if we made the whole image way bigger and showed her whole body. Again, I'm going for a short demonstration, so let's just pretend that it is drizzled in chocolate and awesome and move on. Okay, maybe not a huge rework, but I still want to fiddle with the composition a touch more. Maybe zoom out a bit, maybe see more of her. As it turns out, I like this ribbon disc thingy. So much so that I'm going to let it have little disky children. A little repetition of form, a little reinforcement of the compositional structure. Hey, it almost sounds like I know something about art theory. Uh, don't be fooled though. I don't. We need something on this side, and I'm thinking of mirroring the ribbon wings with some hanging banners or some junk, and with some arcane runes running down them. Rune things make everything 2.7 times more better. Here's a quick digital focal point trick. Make a gradient that falls radially from your focal point. Make it an overlay, and then dial in the effect. Often, light to dark works best, but in this case I want to punch up the darks instead. These hanging banners are kind of crowding her, so I think it'll work best if we push them into the background. I'm starting to think I might like these floating sigil things, enough to have a whole field of them radiating out to her sides. And maybe I can put gems with ghost faces in them, and names in the gold underneath like she's an angel of death collecting souls. I wonder if a scythe would make it too literal. Yes. I don't think I like the scythe. Uh, partially because it doesn't fit in the space, but more because it diminishes some of her mystique. Hooray! It is now glorious snuggly coloring time! Just like we had in kindergarten before a hearty lunch of paste and glitter. An equally delicious shortcut in Photoshop for base colors are gradient maps. Now I'll cover them in more detail on their own in a mini lesson some other time. Probably along with some sort of color scheme voodoo. I'm just feeling out temperature right now. Do I want this to be a cold, moonlit scene? Do I want everything to be lit by her fire hair? And then everything would be hot colors? Maybe a little bit of both in a complementary scheme? Uh, maybe we add a slightly odd feeling by giving her a less common scheme, like purple and green? Since it is so, so easy to fiddle around with color digitally, and your color scheme is going to make such a big difference, you should definitely try out a few different things. Even if you think your first idea is perfect, try a couple things anyway. If nothing else, it's a good exercise for your brain meats. I rarely go with my first sketch, and it's just as rare for me to go with my first color scheme. Here I am experimenting with a monochromatic cold. Oftentimes I'll branch out into an analogous scheme from a monochromatic, uh, kind of like here, I'm adding some violet and green to the mix. Another good tool for experimenting is the Photo Filter Adjustment Layer Type. Uh, just to quickly see what overlaying a variety of other colors might do to the image. Next, I think I'll try a more purely hot theme. She's got that super brain blaze going anyway, so that would probably work well. 